Hey amigos, you are listening to the English Made Simple show. This is episode number 199, number 199, numero 199. Whoa! <laughs> what? Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the English Made Simple Show. My name is Milena Chilena, even though I'm not a Chilena, but I call myself that because it rhymes. Or you can just call me Milena from EnglishMadeSimple.net. That's cool, too. <laughs> Let me start off with a couple of questions, guys. How often do you visit a hairdresser? How often do you have a haircut? And another question I have for you guys guys and girls, I should say. Is it true that girls visit hairdressers more often than guys? <laughs> than guys do? Hmm, not sure about that last question, actually. It's a tricky question. And you'll be surprised. One of my colleagues, um, ex-colleagues from work, gets a haircut every month. That's every four weeks. <laughs> He was shocked when I said I get my haircut done every three months or so. He gets it every month. Oh my goodness. That's a bit extreme, isn't it? Uh, on the other extreme, <laughs> my husband gets a haircut every six months or until he starts to look like a hairy monster that gives me nightmares. Then we know it's time. <laughs> we know we've reached that critical point and we have to cut that hair. So that's every six months. <laughs> All right, jokes aside, do we say uh, get a haircut or do we say have a haircut? Is there a difference? Hmm, we can use both, actually. You can say both ways. You can choose which one you prefer. You can choose which one you feel comfortable with using and then stick with that. So if you feel like saying having a haircut or getting a haircut both are fine you choose whatever you want to use now to get a haircut or to have a haircut uh, both of these expressions are what we call collocations in english you can learn more about collocations it's a grammar term um, in some of the previous episodes episodes such as episode number 165 which was called learn three collocations with the word take, um, like take a bath, take a seat. Okay, that was episode number 165. And then we have 158, speak like a native speaker, because native speakers use collocations. Then we have episode number 015, so episode 15, learn collocations. That should be the first episode you listen about collocations, okay? That was episode number 15. And then episode number 160, 160, which is again using the word take. Take a look, take a photo. And then you can learn some more phrases in that episode. Moving right along. Alrighty, so I think you guessed it. Today's episode is about getting a haircut. You will be learning some new vocabulary and new phrases which will be about going to the hairdressers for a haircut. Maybe this will come in handy for some of you people. Maybe tomorrow you're going to get a haircut and you're not sure how to say you need a haircut. <laughs> okay, now we know. I wish I had something like this when I lived in Chile. I couldn't speak a word of Spanish. Nada couldn't order a cup of coffee at the restaurant, but I desperately needed a haircut. I had my smartphone with me, luckily. I had a phone. Uh, I found a photo of Jennifer Aniston, you know, that actress from Friends. And I point, pointed at the photo of the hairstyle that Jennifer Aniston had. And um, I said, I want this one. I want this. I just pointed at the photo, really. Didn't have to speak. <laughs> anyway, I didn't have a good first experience in Chile with hairdressers uh, because the lady who cut my hair charged me double for the haircut. Double! I paid more than what a uh, local would pay. 
she saw that I was foreign uh, and I wasn't local. I didn't live there for a long time. So she took the opportunity to charge me twice the price. I didn't know until I told my husband how much I paid for that haircut. Uh, and um, yeah, he told me, whoa, that's a lot. You got ripped off. Ripped off is a phrasal verb um, that means, you know, you just paid too much. It's slang, actually. You got ripped off, he said. Well, you know what? It was still lower than what you would pay for a haircut here in Australia. Let me give you an idea. Uh, so the colleague I mentioned earlier, my ex-colleague who gets his haircut regularly, he goes to the most expensive salon and he pays $100 for a trim. Say what? <laughs> the last time my husband went to get a haircut, he paid $20. Okay. So anyway, different strokes for different folks, as they say. Different strokes for different folks. This is just an expression, guys. Um, it's an expression that I don't use very often, okay? But it means different things appeal to different people. So the saying was different strokes for different folks. Right, so let's continue. So I decided to do an episode today about haircuts because of my recent experience. Here we go again, Milena and her stories, her gibberish. <laughs> again, something happens to me. I attract these experiences. I just attract all these bad experiences, really. <laughs> and yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you will hear my second bad experience with haircuts. Right. So I'm going to share this story with you. Uh, it's a very recent experience. And this is the best way to learn, amigos. Don't you agree? Learning through stories. You can listen to my gibberish, my stories, and uh, learn a few words. Uh, and, you know, listen to my story because my husband doesn't listen to me. <laughs> So somebody has to listen to my gibberish um, and I will also teach you some new words. Okie dokie. So I went to the local mall and I saw a sign that said, get a styled haircut, no appointment necessary. It's only $35. And I thought, okay, well, that's pretty cheap. You know, that's pretty cheap for a lady's cut. And definitely for Australian standards, that's pretty cheap for a haircut. So I decided, okay, let's do this. Let's do it. I've never been here before, but I'm going to risk it. I went inside and I was greeted by a hairstylist. So you can say a hairdresser or a hairstylist. It doesn't really matter because both of them will cut your hair. Okay, so she asked me to take a seat and asked me what I wanted to do with my hair. So she said, what would you like to have done today? So another way you can hear this question is, what type of a haircut would you like? What are you looking to have today? That could be another question. What are you looking to have today? So I said, I just need a trim and maybe a little bit shorter at the front. A trim is to take a little bit off your ends. You know, the and um, so the length of your hair, I mean, maybe a centimeter or less than a centimeter of your hair. So it's just a little bit shorter. So we call this a trim, T-R-I-M. The hairdresser asked me, do you want to have layers in your hair? Mm, and I said, okay, sure, let's do it. Okay, so this one is for the ladies, okay, and... Some special guys who love going to the hairdresser. <laughs> so to have your hair layered or to have layers in your hair means to have your hair divided and cut with long ends and um, short ends. Uh, ooh, it's hard to explain. So your hair is not completely straight. You're not getting a straight cut, but it will have different layers. So it has a little bit of more volume. So you'll have long strands of hair, combined with short strands of hair. Uh, if you're a hairdresser and you're listening to this show, you might know what I'm talking about. So unless you're a hairdresser, you probably will not understand what it means to have a layered hair. Anyway, let's just imagine, yes, I want a layered hairstyle. When guys go to the hairdresser, they normally ask to have a trim. 
that's very simple. It's very normal to go to a hairdresser and ask just to have a trim. To make it a little bit shorter, you know, so you don't look like Justin Bieber, right? Speaking of which, by now everybody knows who Justin Bieber is. If you see Justin Bieber's haircut, you will see that he has a long fringe at the front, okay? When you have uh, hair touching the top of your forehead, just above the eyes, just above the eyebrows, it's called a fringe. Fringe. F-R-I-N-G-E. In the US, they call them bangs. B-A-N-G-S. I prefer to use the word fringe myself. Anyhow, I'm getting myself distracted. So I told this new hairdresser what I was after, what look I was after, and she started to cut my hair. She didn't use uh, scissors, you know, she didn't use the scissors. She used something that looked like a knife that doctors use when operating on their patients. I know, <laughs> it looked really scary. Like the, what's that movie called? The scissor, like that movie with Johnny Depp. I don't know, what's it called? The scissor man or something like that. Anyway, we'll find out. I think the movie was called Edward Scissorhands with Johnny Depp. So this didn't feel right to me. I had a really bad feeling about this. How will this end? <laughs> and about a couple of minutes later, she cut herself. She cut her finger on this sharp knife, which looked like a scalpel. She cut herself real good because she started to bleed. There was a lot of blood coming from the finger. She continued to cut my hair. She carried on and she started to lick her finger at the same time. She was licking away her own blood you know, while cutting my hair. Okay, weird. Really, really weird. Really weird. I was thinking to myself, how long will this take? Will she survive? Okay, so that was really weird. Now I have to get my hair washed again when I get home and get rid of any blood from my hair, <laughs> if there's any blood in the hair. Uh, anyway, amigos, this is not a normal day at the hairdressers. I have had haircuts before in my life and they weren't as eventful as this one was and they weren't as scary as this one was. Alrighty, so she continued to cut my hair. I asked her if she was okay. She said yes and she apologized. She was apologetic, but um, she was really determined to finish cutting my hair. And a couple of minutes later, she cut herself again, <laughs> okay? More blood coming from her fingers. I was thinking, why didn't she just use the scissors? Why? Why use this sharp knife? I couldn't understand it. About five minutes later, she finished cutting my hair. So the whole haircut really took 10 minutes, the shortest time ever. She asked me if I was happy with my haircut and I said yes, but I really wasn't. I just wanted to get out of there. I wasn't happy with the experience. I didn't enjoy the experience. So I ended up having a really bad hair day. My whole day was ruined. Normally when you go to the hairdresser, you go in there, um, you have a haircut and after the haircut, you feel like a million bucks and uh, you know meaning you feel like a celebrity but this time i felt the opposite i felt like a hobo and my whole day was ruined finally now i get um, that english expression that goes something like this i'm having a really bad hair day that is really an english expression like for example how are you going milena not great. I'm having a bad hair day. What's wrong with Milena today? Oh, she's just having a bad hair day. Why does Milena look so angry and grumpy today? Oh, well, she's had a bad hair day. I'm not joking, guys. I know that I exaggerate most of the time. I tell stories. I always exaggerate. But this expression really does exist. It really does exist. It's a real expression. Having a bad hair day. Are you having a bad hair day? Have you ever had a bad hair day before? The next time I go to see a hairdresser, guys, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to ask her to have a Justin Bieber's haircut. It looks okay. It looks trendy and simple. What could go wrong, you know? <laughs> so, guys, hope you enjoyed today's episode. Hope you enjoyed that little story. 
Now we all know that old English expression to have a bad hair day. Uh, it does ring true. It is true. It is a real expression and I have experienced it firsthand. Now, amigos y amigas, if you are new to the show, uh, I want to let you know I'm still offering the free gift that will help you improve your phone skills. Head on over to englishmadesimple.net slash phone to claim uh, your free audiobook to download it. It's called Five Easy to Say Phrases to Help You Sound Clear and Confident Over the Phone. This audiobook will be available for a limited time now, so you better take advantage of it now. The link was englishmadesimple.net slash phone. And if you've been listening to this show for a while and you still haven't got that free audiobook, I think it's time to... Head on over to englishmadesimple.net slash phone because I'm not going to be offering this uh, soon. We're going to be changing it. All right, amigos y amigas. Before we end today's show, I'd like to say that this episode has also been brought to you by Tour Studies. Tour Studies helps you get a visa so you can come to study in Australia. You can study English in Australia for six months or whatever time period you choose, it could be three months, it could be 12 months, and then you can travel the rest of the time exploring Australia, swimming with sharks, feeding the kangaroos if you wish, <laughs> playing with snakes, no, not really, but you can study to become a hairdresser so you can cut my hair safely. <laughs> if you are interested in studying English in Australia, please visit englishmadesimple.net slash study. The team at Tour Studies will help you out with visa, with insurance and also accommodation in Australia while you study. Again, if you're interested to visit Australia to study English, then please check out that website link, which was englishmadesimple.net slash study. Thanks for joining me in today's episode, amigos y amigas. You've been wonderful. You've been jamming with Milena from English Made Simple. You've been an awesome audience. Until next time, hasta la próxima. Bye.